we have a hard pure year one question here, which involves a little bit of differentiation theory, some set notation, and the last part involves us getting an equation for the curve from the information that we have on this graph. So we're told in the question that we have a cubic function, and we're given some information about the points where the curve crosses the x-axis, and also where the maximum and the minimum point are. And for part A, we're trying to work out the set of values for which the gradient of the function is less than zero. So if we look at our graph, the region where the gradient is zero is this bit here. So between x coordinate of two and x coordinate of six, the gradient there is negative. So our answer for part A would be two is less than x, which is less than six. That would satisfy this inequality here where the gradient is said to be negative. And for part b, we're told the line with the equation y is equal to k, where k is a constant, intersects the curve at only one point. We're trying to find the set of values of k, giving our answer in set notation. OK, so first of all, our equation y is equal to k would just be a horizontal line. And we're trying to see what is the range of k values for which this horizontal line crosses our curve at only one point. And that would be, if we consider this line to cross through that maximum turning point, this value of y would be 8. So the equation of this line would be y is equal to 8. This line here would be y is equal to 0. And if our line y is equal to k is above this line and beneath this line, then that means that the line y is equal to k will cross the curve at only one point. So basically it can't be anywhere in this interval here because if that were the case, the line y is equal to k would cross the curve at three or two points, two points if it were to actually be y is equal to eight or y is equal to zero. So then our region for part b is k has to be bigger than eight, not equal to, because if it were equal to, again, it would cross at two points, this point and that point. Or k has to be less than zero. We have to put this in set notation. So k colon k is greater than eight, little squiggly brackets. Or k colon k is less than zero. We have to use the or symbol here. This is also called the union symbol, because if you use the and symbol, which is this one here, or the intersection symbol, that would basically mean we're considering the region where these two regions overlap. That's what that means. But these two regions do not overlap. K is greater than 8 and less than 0. Those two regions do not overlap. But the answer is the two regions separately or individually, hence why we use the or symbol. And finally, for part C, we have find the equation of C. And it says also, you may leave your answer in factorized form. The may in this case just means do it. Leave your answer in factorized form. I'm not sure why they chose that word. Probably just a British thing. So I'll rub out what we have on this graph. The points that we're interested in, so we're trying to find out the equation of our cubic. We are interested in these points that we have here. Those are the three bits of information that we're given about this cubic function. So we know what two of the roots are for our cubic function, x equals 0 and x equals 6. So if those are two roots, that means that x minus 0 and x minus 6 will be two factors for our cubic equation. And that's the factor theorem that we've just used there. This is a repeated root, so that means that we can put a square here. But if our cubic equation looks like it does here, or let's say it looked like this, or it looked like this, we would have got the exact same equation. Because for all of those three cubics that we have on that graph, they all have a root at 0 and a repeated root at 6. So we need some kind of way of distinguishing between all of those different graphs. And we can do so by putting a letter in front, or a number in front. Let's represent that number by a. So what this a does, it multiplies all of the y coordinates by a certain value. So it's a stretch in the y direction. 
and a stretch in the y direction could make our graph steeper or it could make it shallower. And also, if our a value were negative, that could reflect the graph in the x-axis. So it could look like this. And again, all of those graphs have two roots, one at zero and one repeated root at six. So we need to work out what a is for our particular graph. So this is f of x. We need to work out what a is. We have this coordinate here that we can use. The reason I've picked that one specifically, as opposed to these two, is because if we were to put in x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 6 into this, because those are our roots, well, these brackets will just end up being 0. Like this would be 0 or this would be 0 if we put in x equals 0 or x equals 6. So we put in the 2, 8 coordinate. So f of 2 will equal to 8. So this will then become a times 2 times 2 minus 6 squared. That should equal 8. So a times 2 times 4 squared. We get 32a is equal to 8. And a is then equal to a quarter. And then we may put this into our cubic. We get a quarter x x minus 6 squared, and that will be our final answer.